we start with a puzzle. When an object such as a stone rests on the ground, does it have any gravitational potential energy? The solution will be given near the end of the video. Welcome to this Nothing Nerdy video on kinetic and gravitational potential energy. Here is the statement from the IB Physics Guide. You must know that energy changes from one form to another. You will be able to deal with two very common types of energy which frequently interchange, kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy. Here is a typical multiple choice question on this topic. You should be able to answer it by the end of the video. You could say that physics is the study of energy transformations. Whenever any change occurs in the world, energy is involved and is a way of measuring the size of the change. If the change is mechanical, that is, it involves movement, we also use another concept, work. Here is the definition of work. When a force moves an object, work is done. There is a formula which we will see in a later video. And here is the definition of energy which shows the close connection with work. Work is done when a force moves an object, and then there is a transfer of energy. And even if work only could be done, then there is the potential or the possibility of an energy change. So we define energy as something which is able to do work. As we know, force can accelerate an object. The work which is done by the force will lead to an increase in the energy of the object. This energy is called kinetic energy, the energy an object has because it is moving. The energy a body has because it is moving depends on its mass and its velocity. Using this formula, kinetic energy is half m times v squared. The unit of energy and of work is the joule. When an object is lifted above the ground, you have to exert an upward force to overcome gravity. As a result, work is done on the object, and it gains energy called gravitational potential energy. If you hold the object stationary above the ground, we think of the energy as stored in it, since if you let go of it, it will accelerate to the ground and the gravitational potential energy will turn into kinetic energy. The same idea applies whenever an object is moved against a force field such as a magnetic or electric field. It can gain potential energy, which the object will lose again if it is released. Here is the formula we use to calculate gravitational potential energy near the surface of the Earth, where the strength of the gravitational field does not change. In practice, an object on the Earth always possesses potential energy due to the gravitational force exerted on it, so it can't occupy a position where the potential energy is zero. This means we can only calculate changes in gravitational potential energy, which is indicated by the delta at the start of the formula. The increase in energy is proportional to the mass of the object, the gravitational field strength, and the distance that the object is raised above the ground. So the formula is m times g times delta h. Of course, the unit is joules. Here we're interested in the shape of the graph and the variation of the various quantities with time so that we know that the constant acceleration v against t is a constant and therefore it must be a straight line through the origin which is either a or d and then we look at the second part and the kinetic energy is proportional to v squared the mass stays the same and therefore that must be a parabolic increasing curve and that would be B and D, and so we can see that the two ticks apply to D. The answer to this question is that the object does have gravitational PE because it is still in the gravitational field of the Earth, not being at its centre. If you dug a hole beneath the stone, it would fall into it, showing that the stone did possess potential energy as it lay on the ground. Mm -hmm.